Welcome to Walk with a Librarian. Today, bibliobirders are at Scapoose Bay. We came across a flock of geese mixed with different colors, white and gray, and want to talk about some tips for identification. So what are we seeing? We're seeing a mixed flock of geese, white and um, sort of a gray-brown. And we should talk about what is GIS. That's G-I-S-S, -S, General Information of Size and Shape. So we want to note the size. What is the color of the bill? What is the size of the bill? What are the colors of the feathers? Can you see the legs? Are there field marks on the underside of the wings? A good place to start when you're looking at birds that you can't immediately identify are to think about the usual suspects. So let's start looking at which geese would be in our area. This first pair of geese are the Canada and Cackling geese. Notice the white chin patch and black bill. Our goose has no chin patch and has an orange bill. This next goose, the Ross's goose, is white, but it has black underwings and an orange bill, which is quite small. Our goose, our white goose that we are looking at, does not have the black underwings and has a much larger orange bill. Next on our list is the snow goose. The snow goose is the all-white bird, has an orange bill of an appropriate size, but has the black in underwing. Also notice on the bill of the snow goose, it has what we call a grin patch, which is black. The goose that we are looking at does not have the black underwing and no grin patch. Here we're looking at the emperor's goose, which has the small orange bill, but the coloration is all wrong. So we will also eliminate this from our ID. This is the greater white fronted goose. So we have the orange bill, but notice that white front that abuts the, the bill and the head. Our geese, our brown goose here, does not have the white fronted. Next on our list here is the gray lag goose, which seems very close by looking at the coloration and the orange bill. But unfortunately, the gray lag goose is not found in North America. It is found in Europe. But don't hit the rare bird alert yet. So using GIS, the general information size and shape, we've observed large orange bills on both geese, no black underwings on the white geese, so they don't appear to be some of the usual suspects that we've just run through. Exhausting the usual suspects, we turn to the internet with the closest usual suspect. We googled gray lag goose and saw links to domestic geese breeds. Within the domestic geese breed links that came up, we hit upon the American buff breed and noted that the higher classification was the gray lag goose. Scrolling through images, we end up finding something that matches exactly our white and gray brown geese. So we think that these are domestic American buff geese that have escaped into the wild. Thank you for joining our brief video on identification challenges. We'd like to leave you with something that we came across about why people choose to bird. Number one, the beauty of the birds. Number two, the beauty of being in a natural setting. Number three, the joys of hunting without bloodshed. Number four, the joy of collecting in that practice of keeping lists. The joy of puzzle solving in, the, in making those tough identifications. Number six, the pleasure of scientific discovery. And number seven, the unicorn effect. After you've been birding for even a little while, there are birds you've heard of or seen in books that capture your imagination, but you've never seen for yourself. And then one day, there it is in front of you, as if some mythical creature has stepped out of a storybook and come to life. There's no thrill quite like it.